Hey everyone and welcome back to yet another video. Today for more light-hearted stuff we're going to be looking at some more posts from like Am I the Bad Guy subreddits and looking at these ideas and discussing who is in the wrong here, who is in the right, what should people have done, what should they not have done, kind of these morally ambiguous situations and taking a look at them and trying to see if we can muddle out a right answer in there somewhere. Usually we can't, usually it's very grey and foggy and difficult, but it's kind of interesting to discuss these things and what we can learn from them and what we can take away and also understand other people's perspectives and what they would have done and trying to just get to know people and understand their motives a little bit better. You know, I think, I think that's a lot we can learn from this stuff, even though a lot of it is just kind of, you know, Reddit posts. Today we're going to be looking at some parent and child relationships and economic burdens and who deserves what and who should pay what and all that fun stuff. So let's just jump into the post of am I the bad guy for not paying rent to parents? I am a 21 male, moved back in with my parents two months ago till I save up from my own place. They stopped buying me clothes when I was 12-ish because I didn't want defective clothes from Fallas? I, I don't know what that is. Never put me in any sports or extracurriculars, all I had was school. Food comes from EBT but not that it matters since I mostly eat with my at my girlfriend's house. Dad makes $16 an hour and my mum stays home. They never helped me with my first car, never helped me when I was in college apart from some snacks every two weeks. They take my five siblings on big, big road trips. They bought this house with aid, so rent is like $9.50. I sleep in a pop-up trailer outside. Point being, they came to me saying it's my responsibility to help them with rent. And I said, I don't feel it is because they got themselves in this position and I need the money to at least establish myself. And they obviously don't need the money because of all the government assistance they have. Am I the bad guy? The trailer is under my name. It is in the driveway with no AC or heater. They're asking $500 a month. Oh, so this is difficult because my mind was swip swapping around between judgments all the way through this. As more information came out, I was like, well, so why am I doing this? So let me give some context first about my background and what my situation was at a very similar point in life to this. I also never really got any monetary support from my parents and I had to do everything myself. So I got my first job at 14, paid for a lot of things myself. I've never gone back to living with my parents after I moved out at 18 and they've never given me any money for things. So obviously never helped me with education money, never helped me buy a car, I don't have a car yet, but they've never given me money for like housing or this or this or whatever. So I, I basically, I'm nearly 29 now, but I had to do everything myself for a really, really long time and just kind of muddle through as best I could. I didn't have any financial age, so, so I get what this is like. I never moved back in with my parents, but my sister did live with them for a fair while until she moved in with her partner. So in her 20s, she was paying my parents a bit of rent, so money towards bills and room and food and stuff like that per month, and that was very, very normal. So, when I was first reading this, I was like, well, yeah, they didn't owe you anything, but you're living with them. You should be paying them rent. It's as simple as that. Like, my sister did. I would have if I'd gone back at all. Your parents don't necessarily owe you anything. While it might be nice to get some help with, you know, cars and stuff like that, they don't owe you that. It's not... It would be nice, but it's not necessary if they can't. So at first, I was completely on the side of the parents in this. I'm like, yes, ask him for rent, absolutely. But then, as you read further, he's not living in their house. He's not using their supplies. He's not using their utilities. He's in a trailer on the driveway that is his. And they're asking for $500 a month for a little bit of driveway space for a house where their rent is $9.50. They're asking for over half the rent to not use the house itself. This is where I feel like the the guy is in the right and the parents are in the wrong. Maybe they could ask a little bit of money for like renting the driveway space, but not 500 a month. This seems a little ridiculous to me. It feels like there's some entitlement on all sides, but at the same time I don't think that anyone's necessarily completely wrong. I don't know, let's read some of the comments and then have a little bit of a think more because this is this is tough. And this person says not the bad guy. Truth be told, your parents provided you the bare minimum. They make almost no money of their own, decide to have half a dozen children, and do not have the means to provide without government assistance. Your parents, to preface, are highly irresponsible. You move back, everyone understanding that you need to save money to move out again. Your parents are within their right to ask you for rent, 
but the situation they landed your family in with their poor choices, then asking you for rent in an exterior trailer that you bought strikes, strikes me as highly audacious and backhanded. Your parents seem to have allowed you back with the understanding that you were to become another income source for them. Your parents respectfully seem highly irresponsible and are poor examples for you and your siblings to follow. I advise you to get out as soon as possible. That is a very good point. Your parents seem to have allowed you back with the understanding that you were to become another income source for them. That is a very good point. They don't seem to be asking money to cover, you know, utilities and space and that kind of thing. They do seem to be using him as an income source because the 500 a month for a trailer, like a, probably like in a driveway, is ridiculous. When you consider the rent and everything else and the fact he's not using utilities and food and everything, I think they are seeing him as a lodger they can make money off rather than a son they're helping out or a son who just needs to pay his way a little bit because he can. That, yeah. I do agree though, I would say get out as soon as you can. <laughs> but that's, that's my response to everyone with their parents, <laughs> based on my own experience. Um, another person commented with like, I can't believe how many other yeah, bad guys I'm seeing. Everyone else in this post is being very pull yourself up from your bootstraps and I struggle so you should too about this. I'm honestly baffled. Yeah, see this is, this is where I have to be aware of my own biases and kind of think about this because like I say, I've always had to do everything for myself and I didn't really have any help. So I think maybe I am a little biased because I want to be like, yeah, this is normal, just deal with it. That's life. But I don't know if that's what life should be. It would be very nice to have some parents who offer you like support and financial aid when you want it uh, or when you need it rather. I don't really know what that's like. I don't know. Me being like, yeah, that shouldn't be an expectation. But maybe that's, I don't know. I don't want to end up being one of these people who's like, yeah, because I suffered, suffered, everyone else should too. I don't want to end up ever being one of those. So I do have to kind of like try and keep myself in check and watch that I'm not falling into that category. I think it's important to encourage kids to become independent adults and look after themselves, but without taking advantage of them. And that's where I think the line is blurring in this story. I don't think they're asking for rent to encourage him to become independent, which is a good thing. I think they're asking for rent to get money out of him and, and basically use him. And I think that's a bad thing. This person on the other said, uh, you're the bad guy and no one owed you brand name clothing, a car, extracurriculars, post-secondary education, etc. when growing up. That bit is very true. Like I say, I never had any of that stuff and I was fine. <laughs> um, would it have been nice? Probably. But since they're qualifying for government assistance, it sounds like they're struggling financially. Again, very similar to my family. At 21, you're a grown up, act like it. If you don't want to contribute to their household, you should consider moving out and paying rent somewhere else. And again, this is where I was leaning with this judgment and what I was thinking until he added that edit about the fact that they're asking him to pay rent on a trailer that he owns in their, um, in their driveway. I think that's the detail that makes this story difficult and the judgment difficult, you know? This one says, are you kidding me? As a person who grew up in poverty myself, my family has always done its best to help me just as I help them. We don't throw each other out into the ocean and say, go learn how to fish, bye. Saying that because you struggle, everyone else should too is selfish and ridiculous. Not the bad guy, OP is human too, and he should be treated like it, not as a piggy bank for parents who don't pay attention to him. Excellent point. This isn't about freaking brand name clothing, extracurriculars don't cost money if you pick the right one, and help a kid to live instead of just survive a miserable school life. College is required for many jobs and his parents should have at least helped him get in helped him get scholarships like mine did, get off your high horse. I totally agree your parents didn't owe you any of these things and maybe it isn't really relevant to the current situation. It sounds like they suck for treating your siblings better than they treated you. However, not the bad guy because it sounds like they, because it sounds like you aren't in their house or actually living with them. You just own your trailer on the, you're just in your own trailer on their drive, in which case maybe $50 a month to rent that space or utilities if you're plugged into their power somewhere. But from what you said, $500 is over half their rent and you want even in the house. Absolutely. Yeah, I think these two people together kind of sum up a lot of my thoughts. Um, it is a bit ridiculous. Um, but they're just my thoughts. Let me know what you think of that story down in the comments below. Because we still have some time, we're going to move on to a second post about am I the bad guy for telling my friend to get over herself? In which we touch on lots of issues around pregnancy and abortion and miscarrying and so on. So content warning if any of that stuff is difficult for you to listen to. Let's just jump straight into this one. My friend who often parades the fact she is pro-choice recently had an abortion because she wasn't ready to have a child. I had a miscarriage just one week before her abortion and my miscarriage is not my first despite many attempts to conceive. 
I found it ironic how someone like me who desperately wants a child but doesn't get one while my friend who doesn't gets it and then aborts. But I kept that thought to myself despite having slight bitterness. She came over yesterday for, for tea and started crying about her baby in front of me, knowing full well about my miscarriage and failures at trying to have a child. I lost it then and told her to get over herself. It was her choice. No one had forced her to have an abortion. She started crying harder and left my house. Her husband called me that night and told him how I was an insensitive bad guy for what I'd said. Am I the bad guy? Oh, so, I, oh, I think this is a difficult one because no one's done everything completely right or completely wrong here. I think what you have here is two women who are both hurting in different ways, who can't quite see the other's perspective and are end up ending up accidentally hurting each other instead. And this is really, really difficult. So what I think the poster here is missing is the fact that even when a person is pro-choice, that doesn't make getting an abortion easy. That doesn't mean it's just a throwaway decision. It doesn't mean it's like, oh, just another Thursday. Abortions are very emotionally draining for the people who get them. They can be very, very difficult decisions to make. Just because you're pro-choice, it doesn't mean you want to have an abortion yourself. And you also don't know why this woman had the abortion. It's not an easy decision to come to. It's not a nice procedure to go through. It's not anyone's first choice at all. So you have to ask, why was she doing it? Did she want this baby a lot, but the fetus wasn't viable? Maybe it was an ectopic pregnancy. Maybe, you know, there were problems with the fetus. Maybe there were health things. Maybe they wanted the baby, but they realized that they practically couldn't because they couldn't afford it. They didn't have anywhere to raise it. They have their own health problems going on, things like that or maybe it just wasn't the right time for them. Maybe there were complications with the abortion that they didn't foresee. Any of these things could happen, and it's perfectly reasonable to be upset about having an abortion even when you're pro-choice. Maybe she felt forced into it by the partner, maybe she felt forced into it by another family member. There's lots and lots of reasons why she could be upset, and it's not just a matter of like, oh, you're pro-choice, you don't get to be sad about it. That's way oversimplifying the thing. That's not really understanding the person at all. It is difficult. That said, for the poster, I completely understand why she's upset as well. When you really, 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 really want something and you can't have it, and then you see someone else who has it and gets rid of it, that is heartbreaking and it's difficult to see. And I can understand why she would feel resentful towards the friend, but that's not the friend's fault. Just because this woman wanted a baby, that doesn't mean everyone else should have to have a baby when they get pregnant. You know, you can't force your wants and needs and what you can and can't do. You can't force that on someone else and their life and their body. And you can't force them to make decisions based on what you want. I think what we have here is a case of both women just hurting and neither being fully aware of the other's feelings. The poster here who had the miscarriage is completely dismissing her friend's feelings over her abortion. And the woman who had the abortion is clearly so kind of wrapped up in her own pain and trauma, she's not understanding why that's hurting her friend who had the miscarriage. Then neither of them are seeing it from the other's perspective, and it's hurting them both. And I think that's really, really sad. What's going to be better here is just communication between them. Maybe they can both open up and talk to each other and heal together and understand that both of them are grieving a loss in a certain way. And if they both just try and talk and understand each other's perspectives, maybe they can come out of this you know, repairing their friendship, and maybe even with a stronger friendship. But until then, there's just going to be all this resentment and hurt towards them, and unless they address it, that's just going to grow and grow and grow and get worse. But they're just my thoughts. Let's see what everyone else said. <laughs> uh, one person says, kind of, everyone sucks here. She should have had more situational awareness and sympathy to your situation and to understand that you may not have been the best party for her to grieve her aborted child with. Good, good point, yeah. So why did this friend come to you and not other friends? Why did she think, did she come to you because she thought you might understand her better because you understand loss or was she just being insensitive and thoughtless? That's a very good thing to ask. You could have been more compassionate in your response. While it was her choice, it may not have been arrived at lightly and is clearly causing her personal torment. You're both entitled to your feelings but maybe you guys shouldn't be hanging out until you both collectively processed your grief. That's a very good point. I'm saying like, yeah, you need to communicate and talk and help each other through but maybe what you both need is just a bit of space actually. That's a, that's a very good point. This definitely everyone sucks here. It's insensitive of her to, keep, to be going on and on about her abortion when you're struggling to conceive and having miscarriages, but abortion isn't an emotionless thing. Of course it will bring some emotional turmoil. It's not like she's bragging about doing it. 
one person's grief doesn't undermine another's, you both have a right to be upset. Absolutely, fantastic point here, very important. Uh, some people have medical reasons and cannot carry a baby without putting their life at risk, so in that regard it really isn't a choice. Everyone sucks here, but maybe she thought you could understand her pain. Yes. Uh, this person says, again, great point. I'm terribly sorry for what you had to go through and I sympathize with you. However, just because your friend is pro-choice doesn't mean she isn't allowed to grieve. She did what was best suited for her according to the circumstances and she's not happy about it. It's fine. That being said, it was insensitive for her to, to talk to you about it, but don't blame her for that. She is a mess of hormones at the moment. No bad guys here. And once again, OP, I'm sorry for your loss and wish you the very best. And then OP actually responded here with thank you. I understand she most likely did not think it over before speaking about it to me they did not realize how resentful it would make me feel yeah i think everyone just kind of misread the situation here and no one was really thinking there are a lot of hormones at play and a lot of upset and grief just flying around in the air and that can kind of implode a little bit i think sadly that's what happened here which is a real shame but they're just my thoughts they're just some of the comments on here um i'd love to hear what you think do you think there were any bad guys here do you think one person did more wrong than the other? Do you think there is a difference in different types of grief when it comes to pregnancies and miscarriage and abortion and all that kind of thing? I don't know, let me know what you think down in the comments. Um, but for now, thank you for being okay with me doing these shorter, more basic, just kind of straightforward videos. Sometimes I just need to relax and talk about stuff and that's, that's what I'm doing here. So thank you for watching, I appreciate you a lot, I appreciate your time. If you like this video, please leave a like, leave a comment, share it around if you find it interesting. Uh, but for now, Thank you for watching and I'll see you again really, really soon.